We start with Italy, where voters have begun casting their ballots in one of the country's most unpredictable general elections in years. Immigration, unemployment and the economy have dominated the campaign and these are live pictures of some voting underway in Italy. And the election will use a new voting system which combines first past the post and proportional representation. A coalition headed by the former Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi is leading the polls, but a hung parliament is also a likely outcome. Well, for more on the elections, Antonio Villafranca joins us now from Milan. He's the head of the European program at the Italian Institute for International Political Studies. Thank you for your time. Firstly, who's expected to win today's vote? Well, it's very hard to say because there are still 30 to 35 percent of people who are still undecided according to the latest polls. That's why, you know, unpredictability is so high. But what we know is that it's very likely that we're going to have an hung parliament. So it means that no party will be able to form a new government. Still, the centre-right coalition led by Mr. Berlusconi uh, is very close to the 40 percent which is required to, co to form a new government according to the new very complex Italian electoral law. Yes, and you mentioned uh, the right-wing movement there and that sort of conservative sentiment seems to be gaining traction in Italy as it has in other European nations as well. But what issues have brought this about? Well, first of all, there is the problem of uh, economy. Uh, in Italy, there is a very widespread concern about the Italian economy, which is recovering, but not at the speed that we are hoping for. And there are also complaints against the European Union, and particularly on the very strict fiscal rules uh, of the European Union, which in a way um, are not able, you know, to support it economic potentials in Italy. So economics uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, migration policies. Uh, and again, there are complaints in Italy uh, against, you know, a sort of for the lack of uh, solidarity by the European Union on uh, migration, because you know that Italy is particularly hit by migration flows coming from uh, Africa, and, sp and specifically from uh, uh, sub-Saharan uh, Africa. But as you said before, the Italian vote should be read in the broader European context in which almost in any country, in all the countries, you know, traditional parties are on decline and new parties and new movements are on the rise. You also mentioned the long-serving and controversial former leader Silvio Berlusconi. Why has he made a comeback? Why? It's not easy to, to, to explain. What is sure is he's not going to be to the prime minister, even if his coalition is going to win. And he already indicated that, that Antonio Tajani, who is the Italian pres the president of the European Parliament, uh, could be the new prime minister. But he was good enough, you know, to say that when he was in charge, when there was his government, uh, the economic situation was better in Italy. In Italy. So if he is in charge again, the economic situation can improve. And uh, one of his allies uh, is uh, the League, as you see in these images, Matteo Salvini, with a very uh, nationalist uh, program, uh, which, for instance, says that we should, you know, refuse to accept other uh, migrants, and we should also push back the migrants we have in our territory. So this is, you know, a base, a, a political base, which may turn out to be successful in this, uh, in this election. Yes, and it seems that anything could happen as a result of this vote. Antonio Villafranca, thank you for that uh, update from Milan.